All right, so we're gonna work an example from 5.1. I wanna determine the degree, the leading coefficient. Then I wanna describe the end behavior, find the x and y intercepts, and figure out if there's any zeros that flatten out. So x intercepts and zeros, those are the same thing. All right, so here's my function, f of x equals quantity x plus 3 times quantity x minus 2 cubed. When I look at this, the first one, the degree of that first term is a degree 3. I'm sorry, degree 1. And the degree of the second one, well, this is an x to the 1 inside, but how many times do I have it? I have it 3 times. So if I multiplied that out, First off, that would be a lot of work, right? But if I multiply it here, I get x times x, which is x squared, right? So these terms right here would be x squared and then some other stuff. But x squared would be the dominant term. But if I multiply that x squared times this x, x squared times x gets me x cubed. So what is the degree of that term? It's a degree 3, okay? So... It's a degree one multiplied by a degree two. So what do I do? I add those degrees together to get degree four. So the degree of F is four. So that's a little trick for you because you have two options. You either multiply everything out or you use this little trick. You look at the dominant term for each little factor and then say how many of those terms do you have? Okay, so for that first one, there was only one of those x's. For the second one, I had one x in here, but there were three total copies. So x, x, x gives you that x cubed that was going on over there. Okay, so just to show you that you could multiply this out the long way, I don't suggest you do it. If I multiplied this, I would get x squared. I would get foil. I would do minus 2x, and then inside, minus 2x, and then last, minus and a minus makes a plus. And so that's multiplied by x squared minus 4x plus 4. That comes from this here. Combine the like terms. And then I also had that other x minus 2 going on, okay? So then I would need to multiply again. Oh my goodness. Let me just set this over to the side for right now. I can multiply those. Not too big a deal. Foil, first, outer, inner, last. That's x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 6. Combine like terms, that's x squared plus x minus 6. And it's multiplied by x squared minus 4x plus 4. Goodness gracious. A lot of multiplication going on here, guys. A lot of multiplying going on. All right, so how do I multiply this? I multiply x squared times x squared gets me x to the fourth. x squared times negative 4x is negative 4x cubed. And then x squared times 4 is 4x squared. Now I'm going to multiply x and x cubed. And I'm going to write it where I kind of stack them together. So x and x squared is x cubed. So I'm going to put the x cubes together. x and negative 4x is minus 4x squared. x and 4 is 4x. Okay, so see how I kind of stack them together with what goes with what? Last, I've got negative 6 multiplied by everything in here. So that's minus 6x squared. Minus a minus makes a plus 24x. And then minus 24. So I've got x to the fourth. I'm going to add all these. Minus 3x cubed. Oh, goodness. Minus 6x squared plus 28x minus 24. Guess what? We did all that work just to see that, yeah, it is a degree 4, okay? It is indeed a degree 4. Now, how could you find this 
without doing all that nasty work? Well, look, guys. I go back to what I said earlier. All we need to do is focus on the dominant term in the parentheses. I look, what's the dominant term? It's x. How many x's do I have? I have one of them. So I do x, and then there's one of them. All right? What's the dominant term in here? It's x again. How many x's do I have? I got three of them, so I'm going to do it three times. And so when I multiply together, I have x times x cubed is x to the fourth. What would you rather do? Would you rather work all the way down and get to that x to the fourth, or would you rather do it the shortcut way that I'm talking about? I feel like this shortcut way is a lot easier, but you can do what you want. All right, guys. Now, I want to not only know what the lead uh, or what the degree is in the lead coefficient, which, by the way, the lead coefficient here is the number in front of the squared or the x to the fourth term. So the lead coefficient is equal to 1. Okay, it's not x to the fourth. It's the coefficient in front. That's the lead coefficient. If they ask for the lead term, the lead term is x to the fourth. That's the whole thing. Okay, x to the fourth. 1x to the fourth if you want to put the 1 in front. Describe the end behavior. What do you know about end behavior? In behavior, what you learned from the last video, is that in behavior is determined by the lead term, okay? If n is even, it's the same. And if a is positive, then I go up to positive infinity on the right side. If it's negative, I go down to negative infinity on the right side, right-hand behavior. So for 1x to the 4th, this is even. So what happens? As x goes far to the right, that's positive infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. All right? I'll give you a picture. It looks like this, up to positive infinity. As we go to the right, to positive infinity, as x goes to positive infinity, the whole thing goes up. Now, even means it's the same. So as x goes to, let's do red for negative infinity. So as I go to negative infinity, what happens to f of x? f of x, it's even, it's the same. So it's also going to positive infinity. So that would be your answer that you type in. Okay? Just like that. All right, cool. Um, I also want to know any x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and then zeros that flatten out. So let's take our function f of x equals x plus 3 and then x minus 2 cubed. To find the x-intercept, I set y equal to 0. y here is f of x. So f of x set equal to 0. So I put a 0 for f of x. And then I try to solve for x to get my x-intercepts. So to solve for x, I set each piece equal to 0. This one's easy to solve. The first one, I just subtract 3. And I get x equals negative 3. Okay, the next one's a little bit more difficult, but it's not that bad. Get rid of a cube by cube root. The cube root of 0 is still 0, so it's just x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2, and x equals 2. So those are my two intercepts, negative 3, 0, and 2, 0. Those are x-intercepts. To get the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So what does that look like? Everywhere I see an x, I put a 0. So 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 2 cubed. So I get 3 times negative 2 cubed. Negative 2, 3 times, gets me a negative number. Negative, negative, negative makes a negative. And then 2, 2, 2 multiplied is 8 times 3. That's 24. So my y-intercept is 0, 
negative 24. Okay. Are there any zeros that flatten out? So flatten out when the multiplicity is greater than one, we flatten out the multiplicity for the first factor here is one. So this one does not flatten out, okay? But the multiplicity for this second one here is three. So the multiplicity is three here. So that means we flatten out for x equal to 2. Okay, flatten out for x equal to 2, 0. All right? But we don't flatten out for x equal to negative 3. That's what this shows me right here. All right, guys. Good luck.